Welcome back. In a gratuitous display of paternalism, the US has decided to stand in judgment of certain issues that are animating India's internal politics. It began a few days back with India notifying the Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019. Almost immediately after the CA was notified, the US State Department preachily reminded the Indian government that, and I quote, respect for religious freedom and equal treatment under the law for all communities are fundamental democratic principles, unquote. The advice was ironic, as the US itself had operationalized versions of the CA on its soil earlier. And thankfully, the Indian government had the nous to say so, as also the gumption to tell the US where to get off. One would have thought that disgraced as a hypocrite and summarily reminded of the basic rule of international diplomacy that you don't poke your nose into another country's internal affairs, especially a friend, Uncle Sam, would have sheepishly tucked its misfiring gun back into its holster. But no, here we are back again, confronted by another demonstration of Washington's gauche censoriousness. This time, the US State Department has let it be known to India that it expects, and I quote them, fair, transparent, timely legal process in the case of Kejriwal's arrest and the freezing of Congress party's bank accounts, unquote. Statements came from Germany as well, viewers. Expect democratic principles to be applied. Kejriwal entitled to fair and impartial trial. He must be allowed legal avenues without restrictions. Presumption of innocence central to the rule of law. I've already told you what the United States spokesperson has said, viewers. The US criticism, the German criticism is in line with the views of anti-Modi commentators here who claim that the actions against Kejriwal and the Congress are denying the opposition a level playing field ahead of the Lok Sabha polls. By roundaboutly echoing this view, it's almost as if the pontiffs of the Potomac in Washington have bought into the propaganda that India has turned into a banana republic with a dysfunctional legal framework. Once again, India duly delivered a stern but sadly formulaic ticking off to the errant United States of America. Listen in. Yesterday, India had lodged its strong objection and protest with the senior official from the U.S. Embassy with regard to the comments made by the U.S. State Department. The recent remarks by the State Department are unwarranted. Any such external imputation on our electoral and legal processes is completely unacceptable. In India, legal processes are driven only by the rule of law. It would have been infinitely better if India's Ministry of External Affairs had held the mirror up to Washington. After all, going by the logic America is seeking to apply to India, its own democracy must really be in the dumps too. Remember, the US is an essentially two-party system. And it stands to reason that prosecuting cases against Donald Trump, the Republican, potential Republican candidate, presidential candidate and former president effectively means that Biden's only real opponent in the presidential race scheduled for November this year starts on one leg. Surely the Biden government going after its only political opponent doesn't make for a level playing field either. But this fact is destined to be lost on the Biden administration. The reason is that Anglo-Western powers, who were one-time imperialists, still, in the main, harbor illusions of moral superiority. That it is their burden somehow to heroically take liberal democracy with its added emphasis on individual freedom, self-determination and property rights to all the supposedly dark corners of the world. That only Western values can illuminate the path to a rule-based global democratic order. This misplaced sense of moral duty makes the Anglo-Western bloc see the world in binaries. The liberal, the liberal democratic West versus the uncivilized rest. Viewers, let's have an open and frank conversation with some of our leading lights tonight and get a sense really of how to tackle this. First of all, let me begin with you first, Mr. Brahma Chileni. Are we seeing moral imperialism at its worst and has India, which has very good relations we are told, with these countries been able to perhaps convey to them 
that you cannot take us lightly. In other words, is this a bit of a diplomatic failure? I agree with you, Rahul. I think we need to take what is happening in a broader context. The Biden administration has exhibited a troubling pattern for quite some time. For example, two years ago, it touched a raw nerve in India when it threatened India with, quote unquote, costs and consequences for it if it did not pick a side in the Ukraine conflict. Then last year, on the basis of sketchy intelligence that is shared with Ottawa, the Biden administration set up Trudeau against India. And then more recently, the Biden administration has used talking points of opposition politicians in India to criticize the Indian government. You gave the example of how gratuitously Washington slammed India for giving effect to the Citizenship Amendment Act. Now, through its statements, the Biden administration is seeking to interfere in India's ongoing election process. It earlier, if you, you would recall that it earlier sought to interfere in Bangladesh's election process by threatening visa sanctions against officials there. But after Hasina was returned to power, Team Biden changed its tune and it has sought to make up with Hasina's government. Now, in the case of India, it is implicitly siding with an opposition politician who has been detained for allegedly receiving kickbacks from a large liquor contract. The irony is that the Biden administration has sought to cast aspersions on India's legal processes when it is facing heat at home for weaponizing the justice system against political opponents. It is employing lawfare. Lawfare, by lawfare, I mean using law as a political weapon against opponents. And, and you're right about Donald Trump. What Biden has sought to do is to build a legal wall around his opponent, Donald Trump, so that he's out of the presidential race. Hmm. I think that um, Rahul, while it's good that unlike when Manmohan Singh and Vajpayee were in office, India now is giving it back to the US. The problem though is that India remains too defensive. And we've seen that even in relation to China. For example, in recent days, we have seen China stepping up its claim to Arunachal Pradesh. Now, the right response to China should have been not, not by merely saying that Arunachal has been and will remain a, an integral part of India. India should publicly remind Beijing that it snuffed out Tibet's autonomy in flagrant breach of international law. And, that, and now that is putting further scorn on, on international law by wanting to extend its Tibet annexation to Arunachal Pradesh, hmm. something that India will, would never allow. So China should be told that the real issue is that it is that it imposed itself as India's neighbor by occupying the then independent Tibet. In the case of the US, as you rightly pointed out, Rahul, India should be holding the mirror to the Biden administration. It's going after the candidate currently leading the US presidential race. Mm -hmm. And it's just not Donald Trump. The entire justice system has been politicized and weaponized. Just, just yesterday, a lawyer for Trump was debarred from practicing law in the state of California. And we've seen a, you know, a pattern of this kind of the Biden administration using law and the courts to go after political opponents. There's no need to talk about this being an internal matter of India. Hmm. We should hold the mirror to the Biden administration. Okay. After all, two thirds of Americans believe, more than two thirds, 67 percent believe that the US democracy is broken. And, and therefore, in responding to uncalled for statements from Washington, India should be willing to hold the mirror to the Biden administration because it has, that, that administration increasingly has shown itself to be not exactly friendly to the yes. Modi government. Okay. So, so let me bring in uh, Mr. Vivek Kaju. Mr. Vivek Kaju, you know, we can pat ourselves on our backs all we want and say, look, we, we gave it back to them and we've ticked them up and we've said that allies must respect our boundaries, etc. But the point is, why are the US and others, supposed friends, either provoking or needling New Delhi 
and not observing these red lines. What's the reason? I think, uh, Rahul, you've hit the nail on the head and that is the question that we must be asking ourselves. We uh, have and correctly in many areas achieved remarkable diplomatic success over the last uh, few years uh, uh, during the stewardship uh, of the Prime Minister and his very able Minister of External Affairs. At the same time, uh, we get these lectures. So the question is, why? Why is the US and, Ge and Germany, for that matter, thought it fit to remind us of uh, our democracy? Uh, why have they done this? So the question, if I was uh, someone who was handling these affairs, that is the first question I will ask myself. Why am I being treated like this when uh, at the same time, uh, the belief in India and the United States is that there is in the U.S. bipartisan support for India's uh, growth uh, and relationship with India. So, uh, it is a question that all diplomats and those who are handling India's diplomacy would, uh, should be compelled to uh, ask. Second. We can, of course, hold a mirror to America, but would anyone in America be really concerned with the, an Indian response? Would India, would American newspapers or American TV channels, for that matter, uh, spend even half a minute on India criticizing the Americans or American action? They'll shrug it off, and that is how great powers behave. Someone criticizes you, you say shrug it off. On the other hand, uh, one of the sentences in our response uh, has been that uh, uh, that interference in our judicial processes and undermining the independence of our judiciary. Can any remark like this, either by Germany or uh, the United States, be construed? as to an attempt to undermine our judiciary, are our judicial foundations and our democratic foundations so weak that any power in India, uh, any power abroad makes a comment like the, way, like the German or the American comment and it will undermine uh, our judicial processes? Of course not. Hmm. So if I was again handling these affairs, I will give one curt answer, one line answer. Please look after your own affairs. We are certain about our democrat democracy okay. and leave it at that. Why well, we shouldn't really bother about this. We shouldn't bother. People just shrug it off. We shouldn't bother. That's Let's not great, get tickled that's how if someone is needling us. Behave. Okay. L let, me, let me bring in uh, General Bakshi. General Bakshi, you know, it is said that successful diplomacy is an alignment uh, of uh, objectives and means. Clearly, the means that we are deploying right now, even if we are choosing to respond, is not leading to the alignment of objectives. And that objective is get off our backs. That's not happening. So, can you please demystify why America is not getting the hint? Is there something here that we are missing? Are they not aligned with our interests or the objectives of this relationship? Or, sir, our diplomacy is not effective enough. It's not just about smoothing wrinkles, but uh, it's no. also about creating leverage. Uh, look, uh, Rahul, uh, with the change of political dispensation in the United States from Donald Trump, who was quite, quite pro-India because he was anti-China. Hmm. You know, his, his primary focus, his primary challenge he clearly discerned was from the Chinese and therefore, therefore he was pivoting to Asia in a very major way and therefore he needed you. Ever since the Biden administration has come, they have decided that China can wait. They have, uh, they, uh, Biden pulled out of Afghanistan in a hurry and now we realize that it, because he wanted to focus attention on Ukraine, that uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan was a disaster. Ukraine is turning out to be as big a disaster and quite obviously India has stood its ground 
India has uh, focused on its own national self-interest and uh, it's not uh, gone down too well in Washington. So you can expect this needling, you can expect this needling and they have been needling not only on this issue, the far greater issue was when uh, the CIA has backed in to, uh, to protect a terrorist and about terrorists threatening to kill our diplomats, threatening to down our aeroplanes, etc. They have taken such a protective stance against him. I think that was a very unfriendly signal which has been sent. And in the light of our independent stance, you can expect these signals. Uh, when they come, I, uh, that's not a reason for us to take it lying down. When they come, I think we should give it right back there and then, mind your own business, turn and uh, in they in case they want to comment on our internal processes so we can we can pay pay it back in the same coin and uh, tell them as to what exactly is uh, are they doing uh, legal actions to circumvent donald trump uh, from okay. putting up a proper fight in these elections so so i think we can just give it tit for tat okay give so it tit Mr. for tat and be prepared for this because because you are following an independent line, keep following that independent line. Okay, so this is Don't really come about pressure at all. Okay, so this is about basically getting us to give up our strategic autonomy, so to speak. That's what General Bakshi seems to be saying. Uh, Mr. Chileni, I just want to ask you this because, look, there are two schools of thought. One school says that on human rights and all these other attendant issues, the Biden administration is not aligned with the way India sees things simply because it has a hard left component built into the Democratic Party that holds up the entire sort of superstructure of the Biden presidency. So that's one aspect. The second is, of course, what General Bakshi is saying that, look, uh, they just want you to become a good dog, obedient dog. They probably want you to cut ties with Russia, help more actively in the Ukraine theater, etc., etc. Is that really what's happening? What's, what's the issue here? Rahul, no democracy is perfect, neither the Indian democracy nor the American democracy. Both democracies are works in progress. We have defects in India, they have defects in the US. So nobody's pretending that everything is fine with the Indian democracy. But the problem is this, that the Biden administration does not display the essential element to promote good relations with India, which is mutual respect. Hmm. It's leveraging the Sikh militants at shelters and shields. And General Bakshi is right. It's using Sikh militancy may be practical dead in India, but it's gaining traction among sections of the Sikh diaspora in America and Canada. Why? Because they're using it as leverage against India. California and British Columbia now serve as the operational base of the Khalistanis. Now these Khalistanis are glorifying political violence, including honoring convicted or slain terrorists as martyrs. They are um, issuing terrorist threats against India from, from American soil and from Canadian soil. How can this be tolerated, for example, if, if, really, you know, if the US and India are really close friends? But I think there is a silver lining to, to this, this periodic uh, spat between the US and India. It serves as a reality check for India. It reminds India that the limits to US-India friendship, that India cannot put all its strategic eggs in one basket, that the Americans are going to leverage whatever they can leverage to, to bring pressure on India. And I think every time there is a spat, or every time there is a Sikh militant in New York or in British Columbia issuing threats against India, it is a reminder to New Delhi that we have to pursue our strategic autonomy they, the way the Americans prize their strategic autonomy. Mr. Kaju, how do we address this in the long term? Another remark will come soon after on another development, and it just creates an ugliness, doesn't it? Uh, uh, look, Rahul, in diplomacy, the lessons that I learned is that you segregate. 
in some cases you respond forcefully some you shrug it off you show indifference the weapon of indifference is a very very strong weapon now when it comes to india's security interests quite clearly our response has to be very strong it has to be practical it has to make people understand that we will never never accept anything which is detrimental to our security interests when it comes to comments on our democratic processes i believe our conviction about our, the strength of our own democracy of the in the foundations of the independence of our judiciary are so strong that indifference is the best method of responding because through indifference you show confidence in your processes okay a well. simple a simple one liner to say that look we are going to continue with our independent judiciary our democratic traditions are strong and we do not need any one to remind us okay. of this is enough okay. but when you start one last sentence when you start saying that your interference is and i'm quoting uh, is tantamount to undermining the uh, undermining the independence of our judiciary then i wonder whether we are showing a certain weakness okay well viewers you've heard three responses i leave it to you to conclude how india should react but i think the one sentence the one conclusion that does make sense is the united states through its untimely unwarranted uncalled for unprovoked call them what you want to interventions gives us an idea of the limits of the india us friendship as mr chileni pointed out and we have to factor that in as we go forward viewers any and everything will be used as leverage against us the response therefore has to take this into account i leave it at this viewers it's been nice once again bringing you yet in addition of crux